Welcome in, my name's Ryan, I'll be your pilot. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you've been here before, welcome back, I love having you here. Boys and girls, we're talking a little surprising news, at least to the fan base. Corey Davis has decided he's going to hang up and call it a career. He is retiring from the NFL after just like six seasons in the league at 28 years old. This is huge news for the New York Jets because this is a position group that we felt like was pretty deep because of Corey Davis. And now, two weeks before the season, we're rolling into what we hope to be a Super Bowl push Playoff push, Super Bowl push, whatever you want to call it with Aaron Rodgers. And now you no longer have arguably your number two wide receiver on the team. So in a statement released by Corey Davis, he says, For some time now, I've been contemplating stepping away from the sport of football. This decision has not been easy. Although I am a deep person, I am a man of few words. I've been searching for my heart. I've been searching my heart for what to do, and I feel that stepping away from the game is the best path for me at this time. I have more blessings than I could ever imagine. I have amazing family. I have an amazing family, a beautiful wife, and two healthy children that I look forward to spending more time with. I am truly grateful for all the opportunities I have had and will continue to have on my journey. Thank you to my family and friends and the Jets organization for some more supporting me through this process. So obviously, very, very sad to see Corey Davis go. I'm a big fan. I thought he was about to have an explosive season with Aaron Rodgers. We were talking about how Aaron Rodgers and the Packers were trying to trade for Corey Davis at one point. So now that he's actually on the Jets, we thought he could have had a really, really big season. Now, I hope everything's all right with Corey Davis. And obviously, family comes first. Based on the way this uh, going away message was was written, it doesn't appear like there's anything you know, worrisome kind of going on. I think it's more of him internally reflecting. And I think it makes a lot of sense. He's had some injuries in the past. And look, I've said it before, and it's the scary truth of the NFL. If you look at the nat the the average age of death of a, a male in the United States, it's 75 years old. If you look at the average age of an NFL player at death, it's 55 years old. This game takes 20 years off your life on average. Now, obviously, there's been a lot of safety precautions taken over these last, you know, decade or two that 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 age should increase a bit, but even still, it's a scary reality. CTE is a real thing. And Corey Davis stepping away saying, Hey, look, I've got enough money. I can be happy. I'm going to enjoy it with my family for, you know, the rest of my, my days, I think is a, a really big, mo big move. You're going to hear some rumors about like, Oh, well, Corey Davis, was he going to get cut? You know, was, was there like, was this the best way out of it? Look, I, I think based on everything that I've seen from Corey Davis and, you know, the way he interacts with his family and like through the One Jets Drive documentary and at, like just even on the field, like at practice, seeing him, you know, with his kids running into his arms, it feels like he's a family man. This is a very like genuine thing that's that's come about now as far as, you know, what does this do for the New York Jets? Like, man, a, a lot of fans are going to feel like we missed the boat. If Corey Davis was thinking about this for a long time and it's rumored that he was talking to teammates about this back in the spring why didn't the Jets maybe draft a Jackson Smith Najigba instead of going with maybe a position group that's rich in a Will McDonald? Why didn't the Jets, you know, the Jets could have gone after Odell Beckham Jr. a little bit stronger if they knew that they had that extra money to work with or DeAndre Hopkins. Like there's a lot of question marks that I think fans are going to have that are maybe a little irritated based on the timing of things. But overall, this move frees up $10.5 million. That was the non-guaranteed portion of Corey Davis's contract. So that immediately comes back to the Jets. We're sitting at about $20 million plus or minus a little bit right there. As far as our current stockpile of wide receivers, we have Garrett Wilson, Alan Lazard, Randall Cobb, and Michael Hartman. Those are like the four guys that are basically a lock to make the team. And then you're talking this next tier of players, Malik Taylor, who Aaron Rodgers has a report with with his time in Green Bay, Alex Erickson, Xavier Gibson, Jason Brownlee, Irvin Charles. I think Brownlee seems to be the player that most fans, I think, would imagine to make the roster. And then Xavier Gibson or Malik Taylor is probably one of those guys. I feel like I'd give the edge to Malik Taylor based on the little bit of practice that I've been able to see with him with Rodgers. It seems like they do like using him, but I would like to err maybe on, on some of these other kind of players here. Now, as far as free agent targets that could become available or that are currently available right now, the top ones are Julio Jones, AJ Green, Jarvis Landry, T.Y. Hilton, and Sammy Watkins, all of which are over 30 years old. So you're getting longer in the tooth. Of this list here, I would say Jarvis Landry and Sammy Watkins kind of tickle my pickle the best uh, of these, these potential options here. Jarvis Landry, a crisp route runner, definitely would not mind having him in on the fold. I just don't know if he's washed at this point. I believe he was with the Saints last year, if I'm not mistaken. Sammy Watkins seems to never be able to stay healthy, but if you're not relying him 
We're relying on him overly so. Maybe he's not a terrible option. I don't think any of these players are going to cost you a crazy ton of money. They're definitely going to be significantly cheaper than what Corey Davis was currently on the books for. And then you start talking about maybe some trade options. There's going to be a few names that consistently pop up. Devontae Adams, Rogers, best friend forever. Could he wind up making a move from Vegas over to the New York Jets? I think that's more likely after the season, if anything. Uh, Mike Evans, you'd have to apologize to Quinnen after calling him fat but he just restructured his contract. It would be a pretty, you know, interesting move to make. It's going to be a pretty big dead cap hit for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Maybe towards the trade deadline that comes to fruition and we get something full circle and we get Mike Evans here. I think he's he's a great option. Big body. Jerry Judy, obviously you have the Hackett connection. We have their former wide receiver coach who I'm blanking on at this particular moment in time. Uh, could he potentially be an option? Now, it definitely wouldn't be an option before week five because there's no way Sean Payton is going to give us more ammunition <laughs> for a player that's in camp to go over there. So I don't think Jerry Judy's realistically going to be a, a name that pops up. T. Higgins is a name that I think will attract a lot of people. He's a big-bodied wide receiver going into the final year of his contract. Seemingly, the Cincinnati Bengals are going to need to pay Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. So there's a lot of money that's going to have to be dished out. Is he potentially an odd man out? I don't know if that's realistically going to be an option, Unless the Bengals, like something goes south real fast and he becomes an option at the trade deadline, because if you have a cheap wide receiver who's going to ball out this year, why in the year that you're trying to go for a Super Bowl would you kind of weaken your your roster there? I don't think he's realistically going to get moved. As far as this concerns the New York Jets and the weapons in general, the way I'm looking at it is saying like, look, I was not going to overly rely on the wide receiver position overall. And that sounds kind of funky to say that. But this game, this team wants to go through the running game. They want to run it with Brees Hall. They want to run it with Dalvin Cook. They just invested a lot of money into Cook. Clearly, that's the route they do want to go. They drafted a running back in the fifth round in Izzy Abanaconda. You have Michael Carter, who's going to be back there. They're going to try and run the ball with this team. Take some pressure off Aaron Rodgers. Then you have the tight ends. Uzama and Conklin have been consistently used in training camp. I think they are going to be focal points of this offense. You got Jeremy Ruckert, who's starting to show out in camp. I think there's a more opportunity for him to get on the field. I think you're going to see a lot of heavy sets for the New York Jets. And then you're going to, you know, have two, maybe three wide receivers out there at a time. Clearly, the Jets want to try and make Rodgers as comfortable as possible. So I felt like Lazard was going to be starting on one side. You obviously have Garrett Wilson on the other side. And then Mecole Hardman or Randall Cobb in the slot. So you're talking about Corey Davis was really only going to be coming in if Lazard's coming off the field, maybe if Garrett Wilson's coming off the field, but ideally you're not having those two come off the field at any point in time. So when you're looking at how these touches are possibly going to get spread out across the field, Corey Davis was a luxury, a pretty expensive luxury at that. And as much as I was really excited, I am not as doom and gloom, I think, as other fans may be. Though I will say if we do sustain an injury to any one of our wide receivers, there is no margin for error now. And I will say I feel a little salty. It would have been really nice to have a DeAndre Hopkins or an Odell Beckham Jr. Or, you know, one of these other options that could have potentially come in here. And I know you can't rush Corey Davis into making this type of life altering decision, but it would have been nice to know a little bit earlier on in the process. And look, I'll be honest, if he's contemplating retirement, they always say it. If you're contemplating retirement, it's in the back of your head. You've already retired. You're not giving it your hundred percent all. So I think this was the right move by Corey Davis. I think the Jets handled it the right way. Overall, I am a little concerned about wide receiver depth, but as far as like the starting unit goes and how our offense could operate, I think you're going to see the Jets try to keep some of these younger guys on the roster, try to develop some of them, and then come the trade deadline if you need that extra money, then you can utilize it. Who knows? Maybe they wind up pushing more of Rogers money into this season and they, they lessen some cap burden in, in future years. I don't really know where it's going to go. Guys, I want to hear from you. Are there players that you think the Jets should target in the trade market? Do you think there's someone that the Jets should try to, you know, scoop up in free agency? Maybe we see some camp cut downs and there's going to be some good wide receivers that shake free. Let me know our options down below in the comment section. And as always, go Jets. <laughs>